After circling Mars for millennia, a giant asteroid called Pi is headed toward Earth and will crash into the moon in eight years, potentially wiping out humanity. As the world panics, the United Nations discusses the situation and authorizes China to form the United Nations Lunar Shield Project, or UNMS. The plan involves creating a giant base on the moon, building a nuclear superweapon called the Cosmic Striking Hammers, using it to destroy Pi, and using the moon's orbit as a shield to save Earth from the resulting debris. Yu applies to go to the moon and is unimpressed when he describes himself as an average and average person. Instead of an engineer position, he is offered a maintenance position. Desperate to leave, Yu agrees and soon flies to the moon with a full crew. Eight years of hard work pass and the team finally produces a super weapon and they celebrate happily. However, Yu's attention is focused on launching the base commander he has a crush on. During his free time, he practices confessing his feelings and is always at the door whenever she returns. However, launching doesn't even know who he is. Sometime later, Yu is in his room listening to music while trying to write a beautiful love letter. Meanwhile, Launching receives terrible news. A solar storm has knocked one of the rockets out of orbit and asteroid fragments have escaped from the moon's orbit. In 27 minutes, these asteroid fragments will destroy the base. Launching immediately sounds the alarm and orders everyone to evaluate. But since Yu is wearing headphones, he doesn't hear anything and stays in his room. All the astronauts rushed to put into the escape rocket and eventually had to leave the moon. It was only when Yu looked out the window that he learned of this. He immediately got in his car and drove as fast as he could, noticing that all the rockets were gone except for one. You started to go faster while trying to use the radio, but the debris was too close and interfered with the communication system. There was a hole in front of him and you tried to jump over it instead of avoiding it, but he ended up falling. English at this moment, launching launches the last rocket, leaving you stranded on the moon. You emerges from the crater as debris from the asteroid hits the moon. He begins to dodge the rocks to reach the base, which is soon destroyed. You now has to dodge falling building debris as the base collapses. After being knocked down once, he tries to jump high to escape into the crater, but is knocked down again. While he was unconscious, a huge asteroid piece was hurtling towards Earth. When you woke up, he started complaining and tried to contact the UNMS. At that moment, the last asteroid piece hit Earth, causing a huge explosion that destroyed most of the planet. You could only feel shock and sadness as he realized that their eight years of work had been for nothing. You then returned to the base and tried to contact Earth, but he never received a response. For the next six days, you continued to call but failed. He then realized that he was the last person alive, which made him even more mentally ill. He used paper to decorate a room for a fake funeral to honor humanity. The base still had enough food to feed 300 people and it would last him a lifetime, so you decided to do what he had always wanted to do. He first tried to enter the launching room, but he failed to guess the password correctly. He then took a board and surfed around the moon just for fun. As the days passed, you continued to try the password until he went crazy. Finally, he gave up and used explosives to open the door, which also blew up his clothes. Now that he had obtained the launching uniform, she created a silhouette of herself and prepared a whole dinner with romantic music to confess her feelings to him. He even started kissing the silhouette, not knowing that he was being watched. It turns out there are 4,444 survivors on Earth and now launching is embarrassed in front of his colleagues. The civilians are in the bunker while the astronauts are in the UNMS underground base. After some effort, they managed to connect to the lunar base, but they could only view you through cameras without sound because the radio was not working. Because Earth was currently short of resources, it would take two years to repair the communication system and even longer to save it. The UNMS president decided they could use it permanently and shared the update. The asteroid impact had fractured the planet's tectonic plates, causing a tsunami that engulfed 30% of the Earth's mass. Cities were covered in volcanic ash and toxic gases, so there would soon be no plants or animals left. In the bunkers, people tried to keep plants in jars, but it was difficult to keep them alive without sunlight. Disease and depression spread among the survivors, who were given only the most rudimentary meals to survive. Some even lost their hair. The president suggested that they start live streaming Yu's life on the moon base so that the survivors could have a ray of hope during this difficult time. Since there was no sound, they decided to hire a voice actor who could dub you to make her sound heroic. Launching announced over the loudspeaker to let all the survivors know that they had found a person on the moon and the flow would begin in 30 days. Some people did not believe it and disappeared suspiciously. A few weeks later, Yu fell into a deep depression and decided to commit suicide. He went to the warehouse to get some medicine for work and found an open food package in the hall 
hallway that he did not drop. Yu opens the warehouse door and is shocked to see a beautiful figure lying there. Thinking it is a woman, Yu begins to flirt with him as he approaches, only to discover that it is actually a kangaroo abandoned by the research department. At the same time, launching starts live streaming, so the first thing everyone on Earth sees on the screen is King Kong Roo. The voice actor they hired shouts what a wonderful day, giving the impression that the kangaroo has spoken. To apologize for his mistake, the actor tries to play the flute, but this only causes him to fail. Luckily, the survivors thought the audio was delayed and didn't think the kangaroo was actually speaking, so Launching decided they would let the voice actor narrate instead. On the moon base, Yu reads the research on Kong, learning that he is very ferocious and has a big appetite, which is why he raided the pantry. He grabs a shovel and goes back to the warehouse to get some medicine. When Kong appears behind him, Yu swings the shovel but it breaks. Kong then grabs the handle and bends it before hitting you. Yu then disguises himself as a female kangaroo and tries to distract Kong, but when he tries to get the medicine, Kong knocks him out and tries to do something stupid to him. This causes the mask to fall off and Yu is chased out of the warehouse. After a while, Kong starts to enter other areas of the base. Yu then shows up with a Gatling gun that he just 3D printed and opens fire, shooting plastic bullets at Kong as he chases him around the base. However, Kong suddenly turns around and starts chasing you. As the voice actor plays his flute to create a dramatic scene, Yu and Kong begin to fight hand to hand. After a lot of struggling, they fall down at the same time. Yu and MS worries about him and tries to contact him again. When Yu wakes up, he hears noises on the radio. There are no words to say, but he cries because he sees this as a sign that there are survivors on Earth. What Yu and the UNMS don't know is that the static electricity is caused by Kong's tail messing with the cables. Yu and Kong look at Earth and realize that they might have a chance to return home and they agree to a truce from now on, although Kong still beats him. Over 200 days have passed since the incident and Yu continues to broadcast a message trying to contact Earth. He and Kong have found their groove and you announces that they have become a family since it is clear that earth will not come to them you decides to modify the old apollo 18 spacecraft in hopes of returning home under his own power as the UNMS discuss whether they can use this to help him, Kong and Yu drive off and quickly find Apollo. Yu tests it out and confirms that it will work after some repairs. The Apollo is brought back to base and the people on Earth watch Yu work hard to repair it for several days. The UNMS are quite impressed so they check their records and realize that he is actually an engineer who somehow had to do maintenance. Yu eventually finds that Apollo can only carry 22 pounds, while Kong himself weighs more than that. Feeling that he has no other choice, Yu gives Kong a ride and abandons him in the middle of the moon. However, Kong chases after him and quickly returns to the car. When they return, Yu begins researching a more powerful propulsion system and discovers that the prototype super weapon is still stored in the previous base. Kong and Yu set off in a car with many supplies, stopping only at night because the vehicle requires solar power. It will take them weeks to reach the old base because it is located on the far side of the moon, and the people of Earth fear that you will not reach because the sun only shines on the moon for 14 days in a lunar cycle. Soon, UNMS realized that you had been driving in the opposite direction to chase the sun. The journey would take longer, but he wouldn't be stranded. You now had 41 days to reach the base and could only sleep 4 hours a day. For the first few days, you and Kong entertained each other, but the trip eventually took a toll on their mental health. One day, you woke up to find Kong driving and talking but it was just a dream. After accidentally hitting a crate, the duo finally reached their old base. Soon after, you found the warhead and carefully lowered it. Kong suddenly pressed the button repeatedly, and you panicked, but luckily it was just a test program. As they prepare to leave, you angrily locks Kong in the trunk to keep him out of trouble. He then heads back to the base, playing music to distract himself. This helps him not hear the trunk accidentally detaching from the car. Hundreds of miles later, you finally notices the chest is missing, but returning to Kong means a lack of sunlight. At first, you leaves, but eventually the guilt becomes too much and he returns to save Kong. As the people on Earth celebrate this decision, Kong happily licks you to thank him. In the UNMS, Launching orders the entire team to find a way to contact an old moon dog that was abandoned by another mission, who hopes to help you. Meanwhile, you and Kong continue driving without stopping to sleep, otherwise they will miss the sunlight. After being awake for over 50 hours, they realize that the sunlight has left them behind, but they do not give up and speed up. The temperature begins to drop and you has to turn on the heater to avoid freezing, which further drains the car's battery. Only 35 miles from base, the battery finally died and the vehicle stopped. You gave up and went outside to wait. At UNMS, the team finally convinced the dog to move, but it was still too far away. They tried to jump it over the crater as a shortcut, but the dog fell and broke. Back with you, he continued to think about launching as he looked at her image in the mirror. 
Kong begins chasing the reflected light like a cat, giving you an idea. He rips off the car door and uses his tools to turn it into a sled which he attaches to Kong. You then flashes before them and Kong begins to chase him, moving the sled across the moon's surface. They eventually find a large chasm and you makes Kong jump over it while activating the fuel tanks to give them the boost to reach the other side. Everyone on Earth celebrates with hope and enthusiasm, and a reward is ready for you upon her return. The humans regain hope and work hard to repair the structures while signs of you and Kong decorate the bunkers. Thanks to this hard work, the UNMS only needs three months to re-establish contact with the lunar base. 516 days have passed since the incident and Yu is still trying to connect everything, which is harder than he thought because Apollo has outdated technology. One afternoon, Yu is excited because he finally hears the noise on the radio. However, when he turns to Kong, he finally notices that he is fiddling with the cables. Yu checks them with his own hands to be sure and his mind finally breaks when he realizes that all his hard work and suffering were in vain because he is the only human left. He yells at Kong for a while before his depression takes over again. On Earth, the UNMS still needed a month to complete the communication repair. Refusing to give up, Launching used the loudspeaker system to talk to everyone in the bunker. He admitted that Yu was not a hero, he was an ordinary man who was mistakenly left behind. But he had worked hard to become a hero for a whole year, so he deserved everyone's support. Launching asked the survivors to turn on their flashlights and shine them at the moon to tell Yu that he was not alone. Soon after, Yu opened his helmet and began to lose oxygen. However, the humans came together with flashlights and even headlights, illuminating the earth to prove that they were alive. Yu was shocked and fell to his knees crying. Finally, on day 613, the UNMS repaired communications and you could see human faces again. After the first anniversary, you spent the day talking to the team, who had figured out the plans for Apollo and instructed him on how to connect old technology with new. Now you see he's launching every day and he thinks they are becoming friends. One night, after they finished the repairs, you tells launching that he initially refused the maintenance job and left the interview. When he goes out, he sees launching and her smile makes him change his mind. Touched by this confession, launching makes a judgment of her own. When she was evaluating, she saw you on the crater, but she left anyway because saving him would kill everyone. She also admits that she would do it again. Meanwhile, something in space is approaching Earth. The next day, you and Kong finally board the Apollo and leave the moon. There is some initial turbulence, but they soon reach orbit and everyone on Earth celebrates. Within hours, the Apollo reaches the lunar station safely and you and Kong set off in search of escape pods. Unfortunately, on Earth, they receive terrible news. Another large piece of asteroid that was floating around the moon was pushed out of orbit by the rest of the debris and is now headed towards Earth. They name him Pi Plus and he will destroy what is left of humanity. The group realizes that the only one who can save them is you, who will have to pilot the warhead to the asteroid with a high chance of dying in the process. Volunteering to speak, launch contacts you while live streaming the conversation. However, you heard everything because they turned on the microphone and he was willing to do it because he wanted to protect launching and humanity. As the survivors are told to hide in the bunker, you cries as he bids Kong an emotional farewell before taking him back to Earth on an escape pod. You then takes off on the Apollo and discovers that a field of asteroids is in his path. You focuses on steering to avoid them as the Apollo accelerates, but unfortunately the ship is still hit and begins to spin out of control due to a failed thruster. You is at a loss for what to do, but luckily launching has a plan. He must open the hatch so that the decompression force can offset the rotational momentum. Unfortunately, the door was blocked so you started kicking the door until it opened. This effectively stopped Apollo. Soon after, you saw the ship's engines moving, meaning that Apollo had no power. He had no choice but to move the warhead manually, but before leaving, you told Launching that he did not blame her for leaving him behind and asked him to live stream his final moments. You then left the ship and prepared the warhead while giving a heartfelt speech as a farewell to humanity. Everyone on Earth cries as you uses his jetpack to direct the warhead towards the asteroid. As Kong's pack lands in the ocean, Yu sings in his final moments. The pressure from the asteroid destroys his suit, but Yu doesn't give up and when he gets close enough, he asks a crying launching to activate the explosives. A huge explosion destroys the asteroid and all the survivors emerge from their bunkers to witness a meteor shower symbolizing their safety as well as Yu's death. More than 10 years have passed and humanity has worked hard to rebuild Earth to make it beautiful again. There is still a lot of work to be done, but at least now they can go out and get some fresh air. The president has retired, and Kong has a statue in his honor. He also lives with the other kangaroos in the sanctuary. Meanwhile, Launching flies with a new group of astronauts to the moon to clean up the old base. There, she imagines you is beside her watching the remains of Pi Plus form a planetary ring around Earth. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, leave a comment about your favorite movie, and we will make it next. Thanks for watching.